Okay, so this fellow we did um, an FU on last year, and you can see all these little white spots that don't have hairs coming out of them, which means we got the root. And so we're going to go back and try to get enough hair to address some complaints that he's got in his uh, mural pattern baldness without donor depleting him. And so I can't imagine how a machine is any better than than a human hand. And a uh, feller makes a great argument on that. So we've numbed him up, and Wendy's pulling one direction, I'm retracting another direction. And we go in with this little punch by hand, and you gotta find the angle, and then you go down. And so essentially using <clears throat> plants as an analogy, I've taken a shovel and gone around the plant and down about 18 inches, as far as plants go. So this, I've gone three millimeters. And then of course it oozes a little bit. We haven't gotten I can't put a shovel underneath and fulcrum this thing out. So in the next segment, I'll show how we, do, how we get these graphs out. But we do this, and so there's a couple of components. One is I gotta hit the right angle. Next is I gotta stay in the right angle and hope that the hair doesn't twist or, or change directions underneath. And third is that the removal component, we can't rip the bottom of the root off. And so that's why FUE is just more of a challenge than strip. Anything you, you wanna add? And then you have to think about which one you are going to punch because you don't want him. Right. And so, for example, in this particular area, these are all great hairs, but I, I can't get all these boys, otherwise he'll have a, a patch uh, that just doesn't have any hair. Okay, so Wendy's now removing some FUEs, which I hand did with a feller punch. And so just like my videos of uh, this is similar to using little plants that you would buy at the store. You know, I have scored the skin and down about three millimeters into the dirt of the scalp. But because you're not able to get a shovel and get underneath the, the graft, here you guys, she gently pulls, and it's this little tug. Yeah, you saw it. That stresses the root. Show the lay that over there. So there's no but fat around it, but no it's still, still a healthy one, but you could see that, you Unlike know, two more strip. touches, yeah. two more touches and that graph won't be good. Yeah, yeah. So this is why FUE is less predictable than strip. When you get a strip graft out, it's got a bunch of fat around the root ball, just like a Here's another one. big old beefy Leyland Cypress that you'd buy at the garden store. But those are good. It's just that... That little bit of evulsive stress is what makes FUE not as good at delivering consistent, lustrous results as strip. And so we immediately take these out and put them in some cold or cool uh, growth solution. We don't manipulate them at all other than to count them yeah, until we put them back in. And we try to get these boys back in, uh, all of them in, before six hours passes. Yeah, because if you see, there's no, there's no fat protecting that. Those um, follicles. And in addition, this fella has very thin hairs, and we FUE'd him last year, and you can see some of these little white spots. And some scar tissue. And if you notice the white spots, there's no hair coming out of them, which indicates we got the root there last year. And there's one spot on his right side that, that I must have gotten overzealous with because we've got a little donor depletion. I've commented on that in a couple of my videos. That the doctor is tempted, if you're having success in one area, it is to keep working there because you're trying to get as much hair for the patient. So you got to spread these boys around. Hi, Dr. Lindsay here. This video will discuss how we do FUEs, but I'm going to use plants as an analogy. You know, with FUE, you take a, uh, a circular punch and you come in over top of the hair shaft and go down to the skin and go down to about the level of the root ball, and then the te technician grasps the hair and the epithelium and lifts up. This avulses the lowest tissue off the bottom of the root ball 
and that certainly stresses the hair. Using this video where we use plants, I'll show you how this uh, is done. And in particular with plants, let's imagine you were trying to transplant a tree in your front yard. You take a shovel and you go around the tree, down 6 inches, 12 inches, however deep, however deep the root ball is, and then you grasp the tree trunk or the stalk of the, of the, of the plant and lift up. And although you've separated using the sharp instrument, the lateral root fibers, you still have vertical roots coming off the, of the deep aspect of the, of the root ball. And when you lift it up, you're ripping those off, you're revulsing it. The same thing happens with FUE. And in particular with fine hair, like skinny plants, those root balls are stressed significantly. And I'll show with this video using uh, some herbs that skinny herbs just have less resilience to that avulsion than thicker, beefier uh, herbs do. And similarly with, with patient hair, if you're a person with very fine hair and you want a big FUE case, I just think that the, there's a significant chance that multiple avulsions uh, from your donor region are go going to result in less health uh, to your transplanted root balls. With thicker, beefier hair, I, I think you can get away with a whole lot more, much like you can get away with more when you transplant a thicker, beefier herb or evergreen tree. Uh, just a bigger root ball can tolerate that avulsion stress better than a fine, delicate uh, plant can. I hope you find this video helpful. This is very similar to FUE. You can imagine that these would be the, the donor sites in the back of the head. We essentially make, using a circular punch, we incise the skin all around, and then when you lift up, you're pulling and pulling the root out. Now, this little plant came in a package where it's not stuck to the surrounding, surrounding tissue, and most importantly, the bottom isn't stuck on anything. But you can imagine in a human head, this bottom, even though we've made a circle around the root itself, that bottom, the root is actually still stuck. And so when you lift up on this fragile little root ball, it stretches, it stresses the entire root. So on skinny little plants like this, or thin, fine hair, the risk of damage in that root ball significantly is, is pretty high. Now big old beefy horsey roots, which I'll show you in a second, they typically wouldn't be damaged so much, but this is very fragile. This is a great example of a fine-haired person's single or double FUE. And you take it out, and you're lifting it up by just up this, and we take it over and we put it down into the recipient site as gently as possible. You have much more freedom with larger and sturdier grafts than you do with these little skinny singles. Okay. Okay, so again, this is a, this would be maybe a, a medium thickness triple FUE. And it's got, you know, a, a thicker haired person has a bigger root bulb and you can be a little less ginger with it, although we try to be very ginger and gentle with each graft. But you just have a little more freedom and safety buffer on these bigger root bulbs. Finally, let's look at this thicker, beefier plant. Even though it's FUE and we have to be careful with it. Now this is more like FUE. It is almost stuck into the into the into the package. So with, in a human scalp, we'd go around with a little 18 gauge needle and free up around the edges so that it comes out much easier. So then you lift this boy up, and you've got it's not as resilient as a strip quality graft being cut by a technician under a microscope. But there's a lot of safety here, a lot of extra dirt and meat that, that typically we don't see with the automated FUV machines. The hand uh, technique that a lot of us use and hand removal, you can preserve this root ball, which makes it a much sturdier, 
tree or plant or hair or what have you. Let me take it in and put it in. Gently into the recipient site. And can you come a little, a little closer? So people sometimes ask, what are all these white dots on the back of their head, or on the front of their head, or in the recipient area? And the answer is very similar to this plant, although I'm going to have to come up with some, some extra dirt. You essentially put the root down in the soil, but you don't put it down too low. Otherwise, water will pool and rot the, the stalk. And in people, if you put the, the top layer too low, the skin will grow under and give you a scalp cyst. So again, we leave things up just a little bit. And then between the last set of uh, plants and this one, my wife said, oh, you have to, we have to go uh, get some water to put on, on the plant. Because after, right as soon as you put it in, if you don't get water on the plants, it'll dry out. That's exactly why a big FUE session is it's really important to keep the grafts cool and moist uh, until they're ready to be placed. We put them in as fast as possible, and I like to get them in the head by five hours. Because if you lay these boys out for a while, they're going to dry out and the chances of success drop off dramatically. So can we leave the, the root ball up just slightly with respect to the surrounding scalp skin or dirt so that water doesn't pool on the root or on the uh, main stem itself and rot it or in people so that the uh, epithelium doesn't grow underneath the, the nearby scalp skin uh, causing cysts. So uh, I hope you found that video uh, helpful. Make sure you do plenty of research. Decide number one, do you want a hair transplant? Number two, is FUE your preferred technique or a strip your preferred technique? Do plenty of research. And if uh, FUE is your preferred technique, just understand the limitations that FUE has, and in particular if you have very fine hair, that uh, your root balls may be stressed more than the roots can handle. Thank you.